Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back. This is part two, and uh, we're going to start that stabilizing process that we were working on the last video. So uh, last time you saw this, I was just getting, I was uh, going to put the scales in the oven, get that all sorted out. I already finished the other knife and put the video out for that one. So, uh, so now what I did is I took the um, the scales out, those blocks. I took the blocks out. They were in the oven for about six, seven hours. And they were very dry to begin with. I was just doing it just, just to, you know, just to do it. Uh, it doesn't hurt. I have a moisture meter, uh, moisture tester you can poke into the wood, as well as one that you can lay on top of the wood. If you're five, seven percent moisture, that's fine. You start getting in at 10, 15, 20 percent moisture, that's no bueno. Nie dobrze. What I did is I got my wood out of the oven, and I wrapped it up in plastic wrap uh, that wouldn't all fit in the jar. I used a pickle jar, but it wouldn't fit. So I wrapped it up in plastic wrap, put it in a Ziploc bag, stuck it off to the side. It sat there all day yesterday and last night. So today is a new day, and we're going to go ahead and get it in the vacuum chamber next. So we'll get started here. Actually, one of the things we should do, let me put this down for you, is yeah, kids are doing projects here. So my son's making a Viking shield, and my daughter was painting a little matchbox car, and then she's going to do a clay coral reef thing, a little project we have going. But... He's doing a center cap for his Viking shield. Uh, so, shop is a little chaotic right now. Putting some things away if you're just going to use them anyhow. So, um, so normally I would do stuff like this on Mondays for a mail call Monday, but it's not a Monday, and you're seeing this most likely. And I thought we would just do this as a basically an informational type thing. Not much as a tutorial, I guess, but informational. Um, there are several guys out there. Well, more than it's several that stabilize stuff. Most guys do it with uh, for pen blanks, and then some guys use a uh for uh, duck calls and for mallets and such. And then you have the uh, resins like this. Um, and cactus juice is kind of the big thing. Um, Curtis Seebeck, I think is his last name, down at Turntex Woodworking or Turntex.com. Turtex we're working down in Texas, and he's got this stuff here. I don't know the whole story behind it, but um, it works really good, and I'm not the only person that does this kind of stuff. So, again, I'm going to be putting information out, basically just uh, solidifying what other guys might be doing. A lot of folks, they just turn around and they'll just buy scales. You know, they just buy it, stabilize it, simple. But I like to have, um, because of how I got my wood, and the large variety I have, if you don't stabilize in house and you buy them outside, the base price running is usually around thirty-five bucks for a set of scales, and uh, that's not you know that's the wood and the stabilizing process. Then you got to add the shipping in it and stuff like that. So it can get pretty expensive if you're doing this uh, you know one knife here and there, and you're buying one little block here and there. So what I'm doing is I'm taking uh, all the wood that I have and I'm slowly processing it because a lot of it was gifted to me. So I'm processing it by stabilizing it. But because a lot of the wood that I have was gifted to me or I got a really good deal on it, I'm sharing that cost with you guys. So whoever's buying a knife, for the most part, all the wood is already included in the price of the knife. Now there's going to be some... Uh, exceptions to that and one is all the acrylic double dyed and single dyed and all the acrylic stabilized scales I don't do that I buy that from George so that's an extra cost and then there's some of the woods like the koa um, they're not easy to get a hold of and when you do get a hold of koa it's pretty pricey so the koa and a couple others do have a, a, a little bit of a markup when it comes to a price and a knife but all the other knives and, and everything else it's just included so so uh, the woods that I'm going to be working on throughout this process is going to be the all the maples, like the curly maple, the quilted maple, the spalted maple, the bird's eye maple, as well as then I'm going to move up to koa, lacewood, pecan, uh, palm, and oak. And I think I'll probably even throw some bacote in there. I'm going to try it in my hand at some bacote. I'd like to see if this process would stabilize Bacote because Bacote is kind of dense. It's a pretty hard wood, pretty dense wood. So I'm going to see if I can do it. I know the guys that do acrylic stabilize uh, process do it, but they're stabilizing at 4,000 PSIs. I've never even seen anything that can go up that high. That's 
over 260 negative bars of pressure. That's unheard of. That, that's crazy. So I don't know if I'm going to do it. So I'm going to try just a piece. I'm just going to put a piece in there. And if it doesn't work, if it doesn't penetrate, it's not going to hurt the wood. I could still use it. I'm just going to have to do what I do with the other ones and soak the wood after I put it in a knife. So anyhow, uh, cactus juice. What this is, is a two-part mix. And uh, you just take the, the, the little polymers here. You blend them together. Put this little bottle inside here. You shake it up for a little while. Let it all mix. Then I have one year to use this. As it sits right now, it's pretty much indefinite, uh, as long as it's kept in you know a nice environment or anything. Once I mix these two, the catalysts. Once I mix these two, I'll have one year to use this. Uh, the maples are the least likely to uh, contaminate this, uh, leave any you know residual oils and stuff like that. Uh, so I do the maples. I do all the light woods first. So the maple will get will go through this process, and then whatever's left over after. I take the, the, the blocks out, the scales, and I bake them. Whatever's left over can be reused for the next batch of, of wood. Now, what that means is I'm going to go. I'm going to try to do all my maples first. And by the time I'm done with the, the two or three batches of maple, um, I'll probably have used up this jug. That's why that second one's there. Then after that, I'm going to go to some of my darker woods and, and start changing from there as well as uh, some of the woods that uh, uh, don't have as much... Uh, um, um, uh, oils in them and such like that. So, so I'm going to do is I'm going to mix that up in there and I'm going to pour a little bit back in this, shake this up and then pour it back in again so I can get all the, the residual polymer, all the additive out of this one. So, um, so yeah, so I'm going to be going ahead and uh, mixing um, this up and I'm going to use this on all the lighter colored woods first. Then after that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the uh, uh, other one. And I'm going to do some lace wood and stuff. And I'll show you those guys in the next video. But right now, we're just going to go through this. Okay, what we're doing next here is we're going to go ahead and get this out of the way. This is the pressure pot that I use for um, uh, soaking and, and applying negative bars of pressure to the wood. But the first thing I do is I put it in the vacuum chamber to, to try to get all the air out of it, and that sits in there for a while. So let me get this out of the way here. One of the first things we want to do, this doesn't have any type of locking uh, lid or anything like that. It basically gets, it, it, it just stays on by sheer vacuum, by the pressure. But what you do, you want to make sure is the, the seal that's in here, this rubber gasket right here is O-ring. You want to make sure that's sealed up and it's clean. And then this, I blew it out a little while ago, so the inside of the vessel is clean. But <laughs> I have to get my weight out, my uh, my locking plate. The locking plate, what you do is you put the wood inside here, as you'll see, and then I put this in, and it applies pressure friction to here, so that it keeps the, the, the blocks of wood from floating upwards. So <clears throat> the next step is we get our wood inside there. You can never have enough counter space. That's one of two things is uh, I learned really quick about six months after making the shop we're doing the remodel and everything was uh, you can never have enough counter state countertops you know shelving and you can ha never have enough outlets yeah I've I've already added two more outlets to the shop since I first did the remodel and uh, yeah, hey should have heated heated the warnings from others. This is how it's going to lock into place, and if you guys will see that in there, that's how they'll end up looking. So then the friction plate just goes in here like this, and all you do is just hold the wood down. And what I like to do is I actually like to leave a little bit of a gap in between the wood. If you guys will see that or not, let me see if that's going to come in. You'll see a little bit of gap right there between the wood and the plate. And what I like to do that for um, some guys actually put it right to their wood, keep it from floating, but it's really not going to float that much. It's only going to float a half inch or three-eighths of an inch when the maple or any wood that's in here has been in here long enough soaking, its buoyancy will go away and the wood will settle, and then you'll be able to see that. So the next thing is, is let's get this resin inside here. Okay, that's about max height, and it's in some people's eyes it'd probably be a little bit too much. But I'm going to have to stay here and be very diligent about watching how I draw the vacuum. You already see there's air bubbles coming out, and that's just 
on its own. That's just the air bubbles being forced from the wood and going upwards. So what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to have to stay here and I'm just going to have to slowly apply pressure back and forth, apply vacuum, so I don't get too much of a head. And you'll see that when I do the video. Um, i got to make sure I don't get a head because you don't want to get it up right here is where the vacuum is being drawn. It's coming up here and it's going down this tube and going into here. And it blows out this little pot here, spot here. It blows right out this. The air exits that. And what you do to control the vacuum is this right here. You use this little valve. You keep this open so when I turn the pump on, the air is going to be coming through this as well as this. So this won't have a vacuum. You'll be able to lift this up. Once I start to close this ball cock, uh, it'll turn around and it'll start drawing air out of here. Right now, I could leave it like this for days. It, nothing's going to happen. This isn't going to harden. There's no uh, Just because I put the catalyst in it doesn't mean anything. There's air to it. This wood will slowly lose its air and be replaced by moisture. If I left this in here for several weeks, it would absorb all this maple would absorb everything because it was so dry. But we're going to expedite that process. So let's get started. everybody so what we have here now is I'm gonna go ahead and start putting um, these blocks inside the pressure pot I uh, I have a couple that are still floating a little bit it doesn't mean I didn't get full pen uh, get good penetration uh, with palm I will pen I could I could soak them and run them for days under vacuum and then put them under pressure for weeks and they'll still float when I take them out I can cure them, I'll cut them, and they'll have full penetration. Whatever little microscopic holes or whatever little pores that are in there um, are still there, but it does get full penetration, it hardens, it does everything it's supposed to. But it just leaves these little tiny air pockets that make it float. I have two uh, pieces of quilted maple in here that are floating still. The ironic thing is, one of the pieces is a thin piece. And that's what took me by surprise. I was surprised that I got thicker ones that are sunk right to the bottom. I've got uh, one of the thickest ones. This one right here is one of the biggest ones. It's about two inches by five and a half and inch and a quarter, I think, thick. It was pretty thick, so that one sunk. So I don't know why the other one's up in the air right now, or maybe it's just because it got wedged, because, of course, they absorbed the moisture, so they uh, it was kind of tight getting them in to begin with. They might have just wedged themselves against the wall of the chamber. Uh, I won't know until I go inside there, but I thought, well, if I'm going to get dirty, I might as well get dirty by putting them into the pressure pot. And then I'm going to put them under pressure for a while, and I'm going to get the second batch going, which is the koa that I just had in the oven yesterday. And this is, so I got the pressure pot, and I'll show you guys two here. This is, that's just, the, that's the big pressure pot. Um, I picked this up. Uh, at a Goodwill, I think it was, um, you know, a little thrift store or something. You could just use this pot, uh, but the problem is, is the pot itself is so big that when I run only a small batch like this and soak them in here, um, you know, you don't get a lot. And then the whole pot's dirty versus if I use this, this is easier to wipe and clean and it shrinks the space that I'm using. And Using this works great for that many uh, blocks. This is a perfect size for that. Uh, but I had to put a little shim in here. As you see this little block right here, I had to put that in here just to kind of let the, the pot sit properly. I do there is I fill it up, I set it in here. It sits on that little shim that's in there. I take all the contents in here, I put them inside that. And then I'll weigh them down with this here.
Okay, here's our pieces. Okay, so got a toaster oven as you guys seen before in videos. I use the pan. I put some foil on it because as you start to bake this, it will ooze out. The resin will start to ooze out. So you can't cook the bake. You can't bake these uh, scales too long. Um, I put them in at about 150 to 200 degrees, and I just let them sit in there, and they just cook. So real pretty, real pretty. Came out really nice there. So you wrap them up really good. As the wood starts to uh, uh, heat up and start to cure, some of the resin will want to leak out. So you want to keep it all in there. You want to you want that, all that resin to stay inside with the wood. So basically, just wrapping them up just like this. So as you see, you just have these three pieces here, just like this. So uh, we'll get over here. Open the oven up. Got my little thermometer in here. Got that turned up, it's on stay on time, convection, and right around 150, 200 degrees right in there. It'll take a little bit to get up to temperature, but once it does, like I said, I've had wood inside that for six, oops, I've had wood inside that for six, seven hours. It's not going to be a big deal. You just want to slowly cure. You want that heat to penetrate all the way in. If you go too high, too fast, what happens is the outside of the wood will start to cure and the inside won't. It won't it won't cure evenly. So bring it up to temperature slow. Put it at 150 degrees, 200 degrees, and let it sit in there and that wood will slowly heat up and then it'll cure all the way through. So hey gang, how are you doing? Yeah. A little dressed a little bit nicer for the shop today. Just for you guys. <laughs> nah, just kidding. Uh ran some errands. But well, I don't know I'm gonna see this. Um so let's see here it's 4 p.m. and we put these in the oven at 8 a.m. So we got six hours. So I thought I'm gonna grab one of the pieces of uh, quilted maple that we put in the oven to cure and uh, we'll see how they look. So pretty good bet that if this has been stabilized, and you can see now this is what it looks like when it starts to uh, cure, it gets this hard plastic look to it. Oops, sorry, there it is. It gets that hard plastic look there. So you see that. So that's what it ends up like. So we'll see. If I still have some uh, uh, resin within the foil, I'll just rewrap it and uh, we'll go put it in there for a few more hours. Oh yeah, look at that. That's nice. That looks to me like it's cured. But oh yeah, look at that. That's uh, we have full penetration and we have a full cure. Yeah, so there we go. There's that part. So I ha went ahead and left them in there a little bit longer. Uh, I'm going to be coming back down later to check on the stabilizing unit. I'll show you this here. Uh, again, here's the pressure pot. We have uh, 70 uh, psi, five negative bars of pressure. The rest of the quilted maple is in that. We got our coa over here, and as you can see, the bubbles aren't that bad right now. But this is going to go ahead and run for the next uh, well, the rest of the night until tomorrow morning, around eight or nine in the morning. I'll check it again. So we're all good here. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Um, the one bad thing about doing all these uh, videos and the steps, I have a hard time keeping track of everything I'm trying to tell you guys, convey to you all, as well as not babble too much. So I'm not sure how this is going to break out. This might be part two or three, depending on how I edit all this. But until the next one, you take it there. Uh, thanks for everything. Appreciate it. Hopefully everybody had a good 2018. Uh, this is looking really nice. I'm happy. Uh, thank you to everybody that's been supporting the channel. So until the next one. Um, see you then. CKKnifeandTool.com. Go check it out. Bye.